Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we'll talk about AMD's keynotes and also my opinion in regards to the whole matter right after this. Alright guys, so I'm really excited to tell you guys about this whole keynote thing. This is one of the things that we actually been waiting on to just hear anything, just some concrete uh, information, some concrete uh, details, specifications, and we finally got it. Now, we got to start off by saying that one of the most amazing things, call it amazing, I guess, whatever you want to call it, but one of the most interesting things is that 15% IPC uplift that actually AMD got on this uh, series, on these uh, uh, yes, on this line of uh, Ryzen, or this uh, generation of Ryzen, just to compare that, guys, when AMD went from the first gen Ryzen to that Zen Plus second gen 2000 series, they only got a 3% uplift. And just going from, from that second gen to this uh, second, second generation, from the 2000 generation to that 3000 Sen 2 generation of a 15% IPC uplift gains. That is impressive, guys. That is really impressive. Now, during the keynote, she mentioned something about servers and she also mentioned something about mobile. You guys are not here to talk about that or see any, any of that information. I'm sure you guys are here to know about gaming performance. And not also gaming performance, but content creation. Now we all know that AMD always have good processors. The Ryzen lines, whether it's the you know the the 1000s or the the 2000s and now the the 3000 series, um, they're always being very very strong when it comes to rendering, uh, multitasking, multi-core uh, type of applications. So we already kind of knew that. But that 15% uplift of IPC, that's that's really where the key is. Because now, not only AMD can match the performance of Intel's offering, but I'm sure that at some other, you know, some other applications and games, it could probably beat it too. So we'll talk a little bit about those keynotes. So she when she did the when she actually did the presentation, they actually show the rise uh the Ryzen 7 3700X that's eight core 16 threads with a base uh, clock of 3.6 and a boost of 4.4 for $329. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Also, on top of that, she mentioned or she talked about the uh, Ryzen 7 3800X. That one is the same eight core 16 threads with a base clock of 3.9 and a boost clock of 4.5. And then as of now, the flagship, which is the R9 3900X, that's 12 cores, 24 threads. And that one is uh, has a base clock of 3.8 and a boost clock of 4.6, okay? Um, by the way, that one actually has, a, I believe it's 70 mega, megabytes of uh, cache, which is, 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 is pretty generous, you know, to say the least. Um, that one comes at a price of $499. Now, these are all great, guys. Um, my take on it is, I can see the 3700X. The 3800X though, guys, I don't know. I'm a little. I'm. I'm a little. I'm debating on that one a little bit. Here's why: If we follow the launch of the Ryzen, the first gen Ryzen, there was the 1700 and the 1700X, and there was also the 1800X, and a lot of people skipped the 1800X, and most of them skipped the 1700X also. Here's why. The 1700 was able to actually do the same, same or just about the same as the 1800X and the 1700X with a mile overclock with a mile, uh, you know, uh, bump on the on the voltage and things like that. I honestly feel the same way about this. You know, why would you really 
buy the 3800X, which you could probably overclock it to get the same performance and you would be saving $70 on top of that. To me, it just doesn't make any sense. I, 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 would, I, would, I would have think that they put our, probably would have did something different. Granted, you get your base clock and boost clocks that are a little bit higher, but you can really, nowadays with all the motherboard manufacturers, they have all their software. They have easy ways for you to just, they even have that one button click where you could overclock your processors to achieve what you're looking for. And I'm sure that some of these uh, motherboards will have that um, available. Also, there's some talk in the tech world about there's also going to be a different setting uh, for overclocking these processors. I don't know any details, guys, but that's what I hear through the grapevines. There's going to be an additional setting to overclock these processors. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, not only that, but they actually mentioned these on the keynote, but they actually released um, another series, which is the thir the 3600X and the 3600 and the 3600X. And both of them are six cores, 12 threads. Um, the 3600 has a 3.6 base clock and a 4.2 boost clock, um, turbo, however you guys want to call it. And then the 3600X will have a 3.8 base clock and a 4.4 boost clock. Uh, the 3600 is $199, so just shy of 200 bucks. And the 3600X is 249. For a six, six core 12 thread processor at that price, that's not shabby at all. That's not bad at all. I, to be honest guys, I still have a 1600 in my system. I have a water cool system and I have a 1600 uh, in my system. I just felt that for me guys, it does everything that I wanted to do. It renders, it streams, it does every single thing that I wanted to do. I have no problem whatsoever. I didn't see the need or I didn't see the, it just, it wasn't convincing that 3% uplift. It just didn't seem convincing to me to upgrade when what I already had with the 1600 was more than enough to for my needs. Now, I skipped that uh, 2000 generation or line product line, the 27, the 2600, 2700, whatever. I skipped that, but I'm actually jumping into this, the the 3000 series. Um, right now, the way I'm looking, I actually might get the 3700. Uh, uh, 3700X. I, I just don't see that 3800. I, I just don't don't see it. The 3800X. I just don't see it being. I, I don't know. I, I just don't see no value into it. Where if I can overclock it mildly and get the same performance as that, and still save money, uh, you know why why even buy the other one? Most likely they'll just be available July 7th, and you just be able to pick one up. Um, so, you know, but. Before you guys go ahead and pull the trigger and buy yourself a processor like that, of that caliber, or spend the money on things like that, wait for review, guys. Wait for, for all these YouTubers to, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to, give, uh, to, to give you guys reviews and, and to see w how the product stacks up against, you know, uh, prior generation, what it's capable of doing, you know, uh, pin against Intel, what it's capable of doing, you know. Let's get some real benchmarks out there, not because AMD is telling us that this is what it what it can do or anything. You know, those are a couple of things that it was a little bit strange to me. Like for example, when they pinned the 9900X, uh, and again, guys, I, I, I love Intel uh, uh, and I, I love AMD. I want AMD to be the, the underdog. I actually went from my Intel platform to AMD because I just felt it was a better bang for your buck. But, you know, doing these, you know, these opinions and these reviews and all this stuff, I have to be unbiased. You know, I have to make sure that I can see clearly and I, I could just not take a stand, whether it's for Team Red or Team Blue. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, when they talked about the, the pinning against the, uh, the 9900 from Intel, 
they didn't say if it was if it was uh, on on out of the box uh, settings. They didn't say if it had an overclock. The uh, you know for the five point five point zero gigahertz on the you know uh, overclock or they they really didn't give much detail. They said it's pin against this. So at that point you're taking their word now. Even though that might be the case or whatever, these processors still look impressive. They really do. So, um, you know, my, my take on them is that I, I honestly, here's another thing. We don't know if, if these processors can, can overclock any higher from that turbo, uh, turbo clock or turbo boost, whatever they have uh, uh, available to us. So... I want to say at least, at least, based on the skew that you get and based on on on, on the silicone lottery, you could you you could protect. This is just a personal opinion, a guess, but I want to say that you could probably see some of these uh, chips hit 4.8 gigahertz. That's that's my that's my assumption. And if you go like to with some exotic cooling. Maybe you can even hit that 5.0. Who knows? It's too early to tell. Uh, we did get some specs, and we saw a lot of these um, uh, beautiful presentations, nice presentations from from AMD. They're definitely gonna cause some ruckus this this you know the, the this year, the following year. I mean, for these couple of years to come, they're definitely gonna be dominating uh, a lot of the um, the market. To be honest, Intel doesn't have anything to answer back, and it, you know it, it's in a way it's a shame. I wouldn't say it's a shame because maybe it's not their fault. You know, maybe they can't help it or anything. But this is why we need competition, guys, to keep these little guys from becoming, you know, uh, flipping the script and also now becoming AMD becoming Intel and saying we're gonna sell these products for X amount of money. My take is if Intel would have been very competitive before or even during this launch of a, a, a Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 series, the prices on these processors might have been a little bit cheaper, you know, because when you don't have no competition, this is the same thing that happened with Intel, when you don't have no competition, you, you, you're basically got free reigns to say, we got no competition. This is what we're going to charge for the processors and whatever, whatever, whatever. It is what it is. Now, on the other hand, you do have to understand that AMD is actually giving you more cores and more threads. And it's giving you 4.0, Gen 4.0, things like that on PCI. So you are getting a little bit more. Uh, you are getting a little bit more than what Intel would be offering you for the same amount of money, you know, for the same price. So these processes, they look very competitive and uh, I'm looking forward to get mine. So I want to do some benchmarks. I want to do, uh, you know, just check it out, see what I can do with it. Again, um, I, most likely I'll begin at 3700X unless... From this time to release time, some other new information comes out where it's actually confirmed. Uh, but at this time, I think that for me, the the best bang for your buck will be the 3700X. That's just, you know, eight cores, 16 threads, you know, at $329. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's a really, it's a bargain. It's a really good deal. You know what I mean? You're getting a good deal compared to... What you got from the first from the first generation of them, you know, it wasn't. You you have to you had to pay premium price to, in order for you to get something like that for you know eight core and sixteen thread, where now you're you're able to get that with some decent clock speeds for three for just three hundred and twenty nine dollars. So that's good. Not only that, guys, but they also have a plethora of motherboards X five seventies. Now, that's another thing, too, that I actually want to find out. I want to find out myself. Now, in order for you to have certain gains, do you need a, a new motherboard, new X570 motherboard, or would you be able to achieve that same type of performance with, let's say, an X370 or X470 motherboard? 
So those those are very interesting things that I want to find out. I I want to uh, most likely, guys. What I want to do is I want to. I already have an X three seventy motherboard. Again, I just didn't see the the you know the the the, the benefits of jumping from the X three seventy to the X four seventy motherboard at that time. So I just say you know what I'll skip this, uh, refresh this this Sen Plus or whatever, and I'll go ahead and and you know jump on the next uh, on the next big up uh, upgrade, which you know it looks like Sen two uh, three thousand series is. But I most likely what I'll do is I'll probably purchase also a X570 motherboard. And what I would like to do maybe is just compare it and see if that particular processor, whichever processor might be, whether it's the 3700X, 3800X, or even the 3900X, if there's any difference, guys, from going from one motherboard to the other one and see if there's actually some sort of substantial uh, improvements, you know? Yeah, so to, to close things up, I just want to say that Lisa Su did a, a phenomenal job. Um, AMD is doing a phenomenal job. They're providing, uh, you know, SKUs and parts that are just as good as Intel. If not, just they might be able to beat them. We'll just have to see to these independent reviews comes on comes out, and from that point on, guys, we could do a, uh, make a better assessment of what, what's out, out there available and what these processors can really do. Also, uh, last thing, Navi. That, there's rumor that Navi will be, they did a, uh, a demo, you know, some sort of short demo that shows what it was capable of doing. Um, but some sources say that Navi will be fully detailed at E3. We don't know yet, but we just have to wait on that one. But as of now, these processors look amazing, guys. Let's hope that they, you know, they're 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 just as good as, as what they look like in the keynotes. They're just as good as whatever we saw. And let's just hope that, man, these things are a beast because I, I'm ready. I'm ready for them for sure. All right, guys. Well, you know the same. You know as always. Uh, you know, like, share, subscribe. You know, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what I did wrong. That way I can fix it, guys. And that way. I could bring you guys some good content for the next time, all right? So, see you in the next video. Bye.